This month we have some unfortunate news about the chip shortage, but also some good news about the Court 64 pilot production run and the SO Edge. Big thanks to Lucas Arzinski, JF, Gammy, and Clover for helping with this video. Also, if you want more content about open source software and hardware, check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd. This is a video version of the community update, so this will not have as many details as the blog post, but this video will give you the synopsis, so let's get into it. First up, we have some production hurdles. Now, I get a lot of you probably go to the timestamps in the description and skip over to the topic you're most interested in, but before you do that, please listen to the first part of the housekeeping section. Last week, we announced that we will take pre-orders for the Pinebook Pro and Pinephone once these devices are securely underway. The Pine Store inventory items, such as the Pine Soul, Pine Tab, and SO Pine modules, have drifted in and out of the Pine Store's stock availability over the course of the past few weeks. This is a result of the very severe manufacturing issues affecting the entire electronics industry, including us. Right now, all components have lead times of 40 weeks or more. RAM and EMMC memory, as well as LCD panels, are also in severe shortage, with lead times of 60 plus weeks. Silicon is also affected by this, and our SOCs such as the A64 are also in short supply. A good analogy for this is the toilet paper situation at the beginning of the pandemic. Think of that, but with transistors, PC and phone parts, and silicon. Similar to the scalpers who sold hand sanitizer for $10 on eBay, a lot of our component vendors are exhibiting out-of-character behavior and preying on businesses in distress. There is not a clear path out of this for factories or businesses, and it's getting more severe with no end in sight. Because of this, we would like to be more cautious when taking pre-orders, as well as monitoring the Pine Store stock. For devices like the Pinebook Pro and Pinephone, we don't want to open pre-orders just to find out a week later that the factory doesn't have the means to deliver components to us. We think that you would prefer to patiently wait and get your device delivered in a timely manner, rather than have us hold on to your money for an extended period of time. We hope that this clarifies the situation, but at the same time, we ask you not to bombard info and sales of questions about availability, who do not have up-to-date insight into production status. Instead, please subscribe to our Telegram news channel. This is not a chat stream. This is more of a stream of announcements of a way to notify you when things become available again. We are working on a system that allows users to track product availability and expected pre-order windows. Given the current situation's Right now that we just talked about, this won't be much help to us right now because of the uncertainty, but it is something that end users will benefit from in the future when the world eventually gets back to normal. We also hope that this will unbarden the support, info, and sales team and stop it from being spammed by questions of availability. We plan on testing the system out either this April or May. If you know of a company that has a good product availability system in place, please share it in the comment section. Last week, Lucas posted the Pine One riddle, and it was cracked in record time. We would like to congratulate Dalton for being the first to solve the riddle and providing a detailed explanation of his thought process. We were shocked by how fast it was deciphered, because Lucas expected it to take hours or even days. This is the third reveal riddle we've done so far, and we will probably continue doing it given the positive response from the community. Lucas was recently on Foss North Podcast talking about Pine64, a strategy of community engagement, and our plans going forward. We encourage you to take a listen when the episode airs, and in the meantime, Foss North has a good backlog of content with some of the most insightful industry insiders. Speaking of podcasts, Pine Talk now has a Macedon account, and you can now find Pine Talk on podcastindex.org. The most recent episode aired just last Friday, in which Peter and Ezra discussed video calls on the PinePhone, RISC-V GPUs, and offered their views on your suggestions for future Pine64 gear, as well as responding to community questions. This is available on every major podcast platform, as well as here on YouTube, LBRY slash Odyssey, and TIL vids. Thanks to Gammy's hard work, the SO Edge AI module is finally ready for prime time. We can now run a fully functional BSP Linux on the AI module. This Linux build is capable of utilizing the SO Edge's NPU, as well as enablement for all core functionality of the module. This includes, but not limited to, Gigabit Ethernet, USB, PCIe, as well as the LCD DPI interface with touch input. When inserted into a Model A SO Edge or SO Pine baseboard, it can also utilize our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth SDIO modules. 
Getting the SO Edge build operation was a monumental undertaking, and Gammy did a very good job in not only porting Linux, but also in getting it to support existing Pine64 hardware. As you can see here, this SO Edge build has been customized to work with the existing Pine hardware, including the A64 LCD panel. The SO Edge is capable of working on the SO Pine baseboard thanks to the pinout compatibility of both the SO Edge and SO Pine modules. But we are working on an SO Edge specific baseboard, which among others will expose the PCIe, which is something that the SO Pine doesn't do. Thanks to the SO Edge's pinout compatibility with the SO Pine, it can be inserted into the cluster board. There are lots of setups you can use the SO Edge with. You can mix and match the SO Edge and SO Pine modules on a cluster board to achieve a mixed computational and AI setup, or populate the cluster board slots with a bunch of SO Edges, each equipped with a USB UVC camera. The SO Edge baseboard should be back from the factory next month, as well as a USB 3.0 adapter board allowing the SO Edge to couple with any USB 3.0 enabled x86 pc or sbc we are currently planning on having the so edge as well as the baseboard and adapter board available mid-april we plan on producing a pilot batch of the court 64 model a sbc we were originally going to roll out the board slowly to developers first to get stable software on it before release but with the production window closing rapidly we decided instead to take a leap of faith and press the go button as a result, the first boards will be available late next month. We cannot stress this enough, but this production run is strictly aimed at developers and not end users. If you want a fully functional SBC, we recommend you to pick up a Rock Pro 64 or an A64-LTS board instead. It will take time for the Quartz 64 to reach its full potential, and if you're not interested in participating in the development process, then you'd be wise to look elsewhere for now. Speaking of development, the first 8GB Quartz 64 board has just been dispatched to contributors participating in the early bring-up process. More people participating in the early development cycle, we expect to be able to relay early software progress next month. As things stand, the product team managed to boot BSP Linux with kernel 4.19 on Quartz 64 and enabled some of the board's basic features and functionality for testing. Community developers, however, have not yet been able to boot the board into Linux. So it's still the early days and we will need to wait a little bit longer to see full mainline Linux running on this device. The product and engineering teams have been evaluating various e-ink displays that can be used in conjunction with the board. The e-ink display has been brought up to work with the Rockchip SDK and the stock Android build. We are told that the performance is better than devices of similar power and thermal envelopes currently available on the market. This is a very exciting prospect, not only for Quartz 64, but also for the devices it may give birth to. We have seen a lot of suggestions. We may use the board for an e-ink type display, but it's one thing to have the panel working with the default SDK, and another thing to have it work with BSP Linux, but it's another thing to get this panel mainlined. We do share your enthusiasm for an e-ink based device based on the Quartz 64, but keep in mind the road ahead of us is long and likely windy. As for the Quartz Model B, which will feature a smaller footprint than the Model A, we will have to wait a little bit longer for it to see the light of day. We are happy with the design of the Model B, but despite being in possession of approximately 70% of all RK3566 SOCs, we still don't have enough to produce both the Model A and B boards simultaneously, and we would like to prioritize the Model A board given its development-focused nature. We are hoping to open Pinebook Pro pre-orders this month, However, as explained in housekeeping, this is dependent on production proceeding without hiccups. Currently, the factory plans to begin the manufacturing process the week of March 22nd to March 28th. This gives you a general sense of when to expect Pinebook Pro pre-orders, but keep in mind these will be reduced at a revised price point of $220 due to the component price hike in order to prevent another delay. Keep in mind that if you miss this batch, the price will likely increase even more in future batches. We do not like increasing the price point of our devices, but this is unavoidable. In terms of software releases, it is now a great time to pick up a Pinebook Pro. Armbian has recently released new device images featuring Panfrost acceleration and a new version of Armbian shipping with GNOME. Lucas spent a week testing it out and it has been a very pleasant experience so far for him. 
He reports that Gnome on Arbion can run just as fast as Plasma can on Manjaro, and all applications, including Firefox, are just as responsive. So for those of you who have been wanting a traditional Ubuntu experience on the Pinebook Pro, we can now say that this is now reality. They currently have images for Gnome, XFCE, Mate, and test builds for Cinnamon and Budgie. There is also a post-market OS image featuring Kernel 5.11 and Gnome for the Pinebook Pro. There are both live and install images available, with the install images allowing you to encrypt your file system and set your name and password and tweak a couple other things. Postmarket OS is primarily a mobile OS, but because it's based on Alpine Linux, it's lightweight, and it's tailored to run on ARM, it is a very good choice for the Pinebook Pro. Last but not least, our friends at Manjaro have recently released Manjaro ARM 21.02, which will ship with the next version of the Pinebook Pro. While the Pinebook Pro ships with Plasma, there is also an officially supported Manjaro Mate image for the Pinebook Pro, and we have seen a lot of recent experimentation on the Manjaro base, including a build from Clover, which features Lomary. Lomary runs very well on the Pinebook Pro and offers a pretty unique experience on the platform. As many of you know, we were planning on launching Pinefront production last week and opening pre-orders up this week. However, at that time, we couldn't have predicted that our vendors wouldn't hold up their end of the agreement due to circumstances brought up during housekeeping. We will spare the details, but our components that we booked in advance were sold to other parties, presumably at a higher price point. We have managed to source many of the components we lost, but we're short of one component that is normally easy to get and is nowhere to be found. The production team is continually looking for the said component, and once they find it, the production will be able to begin again. Production will most likely begin soon, but we cannot tell you exactly when. It could be today or tomorrow. It could even be another month or three. We know you want to pre-order the next Pinephone batch, but as stated in housekeeping, we are waiting until we know that production is underway and there are no obstacles in sight. The announcement of Pinephone pre-orders will most likely drop quite suddenly without prior warning, so to get notified, follow our Telegram channel and follow us on Twitter and Macedon. On the flip side, all we need is one missing component and we've got everything else lined up. This batch, as well as the next two or three batches after, will be referred to as the beta edition, which indicates the software status. Despite the huge strides made by Manjaro and Plasma in the last three months, we do not want to market it as an end-user ready product, even if the target user base is informed Linux enthusiasts. It will still be a couple of months before the software reaches a status where we would be willing to pitch the Pinephone as a fully ready smartphone for Linux enthusiasts. That said, let's take a moment to appreciate the fact that the software has moved out of alpha stages, and the core smartphone functionality has now reached considerable maturity thanks to the community additions. The Manjaro Plasma build has been submitted to the factory alongside the default presentation box and documentation. There will also be a readme note and a quick start guide included in the box. The hardware remains the same as the last few community editions with the 1.2b revision of the PCB. As for the keyboard case, we are currently waiting for keycap molds to come back from the factory. We were told that we can expect the keycaps in the second half of this month, and as soon as we can get an update, there will be tweets with photos of the Pine Phone in a PDA-like configuration. As long as there are no issues found with the molding, we can see the Pine Phone keyboard in the Pine Store as early as mid-May. There have also been considerable progress for the fingerprint case on the Pine Phone. The PCB and case design have been submitted for manufacturing, although we did have to make alterations to the original case design by Zachary due to the availability of the sensor. We do not have an ETA yet, but we expect it to be ready some point in quarter two as long as the manufacturing situation doesn't worsen. We have a lot of news to share about the Pine Time this week. Let's start with the new release of the MCU boot bootloader for the Pine Time. We mentioned this in the January community update and have since performed many tests to ensure that it works correctly to make the upgrade procedure as safe as possible. The bootloader obviously helps the smartwatch boot up when you turn it on, but it is also responsible for upgrading the firmware when new firmware is available for the Pine Time. MCU boot ensures that the upgrade is 100% safe by swapping the old and the new version of the firmware in memory. 
In the event of an unexpected error, it is able to revert to the old version of the firmware. Any issues with the bootloader could temporarily or permanently brick your pine time, which is why we put so much effort into getting the bootloader working right. Upgrading the bootloader is a critical operation as there is no fallback in the event an error occurs during the upgrade, and it looks like everything is working well and it's fairly safe to apply the update, but please read the update instructions very carefully. This works as well as it does thanks to Lupion's work on the bootloader, and this new version is mostly an improved version of his work. Since last month, there have been three new versions of InfiniTime. Versions 0.12 and 0.13 have improved Bluetooth connectivity by a lot, and while it's still not perfect, BLE connection is far more reliable now. Users should notice less unexpected disconnections and fewer failed over-the-air updates. The version 0.13 of InfiniTime also added vibrations on notifications and notifications when your phone receives a call, allowing you to accept, reject, or ignore the call on the watch. Affinitime 0.14 brought the first UI update of Affinitime thanks to Joaquim's work. There was some work done updating the graphics library Affinitime uses, which allows us to create nicer apps and watch faces. But he didn't stop there and improved the UI of many apps, including the notification app. There is also a new release of WaspOS with more integration of the watch with the phone. WaspOS now works with GadgetBridge, and WaspOS 0.4 added a new nice analog clock watch face, and new UI widgets, and a new theming engine. We also have a new app from Alex Robinson called Siglo, a new GTK-based companion app for the Pine Time that is capable of syncing time with AffiniTime. And he is also working on adding over-the-air flashing over Siglo. There is another new companion app that is web-based called Web BLE Watch, which uses Web BLE to connect and set the time on AffiniTime. Martin, the developer, describes it as a proof of concept, but it would be cool to see the development continue and add OTA functionality in the future. GadgetBridge for Android has a new version 0.55, which fixes the music controller app and adds support for call notifications. Finally, Amisfish added support for call notifications and improved the way notifications are displayed. Now, now the name of the application pushing the notification and the full text message. It's amazing to see how much work the community has achieved this month, and it's going to be cool to see what they accomplish next. Anyways, that is all. Have a good day and a good life. Enjoy our next update.